friends, welcome back to exam one review. We're talking about adding 3D vectors together, the resultant of vectors. This is a good test question for number one, the problem number one. Remember, there's going to be five of these videos. Um, but this one says determine the magnitude and coordinate direction angles. Remember, that's alpha, beta, and gamma in the book, or what we called theta x, theta y, theta z. Okay. At, and find the coordinate direction angles of the resultant. So not of these, but of the resultant. So like after we add these together, we get a vector. Find the coordinate direction angles of that vector. Okay. And the direction angles are the, you know, from the axis to the vector, from the axis to the vector, right? So we know how to do that. So step one, we got to look at the vectors. We got three of them, F1, F2, and F3. And we've got to decide how are they given? Because remember our tools, we've got blue triangles, We've got directional cosines, and we've got with coordinates. And as a matter of fact, in this case, I think we have all three of those, one of each. So let's start off with vector F1. F1 is here, okay? And what we're trying to do, of course, is get all three of these vectors written in, ow, I, oh, sorry, in IJK form. So F1, F2, F3. Okay, so we want these three guys here in IJK form. So the first thing we need to do, we need to remember, let's look at F1. What is that? How's that given? Well, there's some angles on there. Is that directional cosines? It goes from the vector to the, but this one, uh, you know what? I think this one's blue triangles. Okay, so let's, let's see if we remember the blue triangle equations. They are Fx is equal to F cosine, no, well, we can do it that way. Phi sine theta z, Fy is equal to F cosine, nope, sorry, that's sine, sine phi uh, sine theta z, and the last one, Fz, is F cosine theta z, okay? So we needed the things to plug into that, which is F, um, phi, and theta, z, okay? And if you don't remember how to find these things, go back and watch my video on uh, drills on blue triangle equations, right? And, and we worked it over and over and over and over until you get it, okay? So here we go. F1 is here. The magnitude is given. Boom. It's 200. That goes here, okay? Uh, we need phi. What is phi? Phi is the swing angle. It goes from the positive x-axis to the bottom of the door. So this would be the positive direction, but I'm going to go this way. And if from, from the y over to the bottom of the door is 30, from the x over the bottom of the door must be 60. Good. <laughs> Minus 60 degrees, okay? And then theta z is from positive z down to the vector. Matter of fact, it's just given it's 30 degrees. Now the cool thing, here's, here's a way to not make a mistake. Look at this guy, look at that vector, okay? I can look at it and say, okay, he's gonna be positive X, negative Y, and positive Z. So if I don't get positive, negative, positive out of those equations, I do not have the correct things here, okay? So there's an easy way to check your sanity by just looking at what you got, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna plug these in my calculator and let's see what we get here. So we get 200 times the cosine of phi, which is negative 60, parentheses, times the sine of theta z, which is 30, which is, give me positive, 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 50, okay? So fx is 50, okay? Fy, I got my fingers crossed for a negative here, right? Fy is 200 times sine of phi, so sine of negative 60, and this time uh, sine times the sine of um, 30 equals, give me negative, give me negative, negative 86.6. Okay, that means we got the right thing in here. All right, come on, one more, and that is 200 times the cosine of 30, which is 0 0.866, 173.2. OK, 
Okay, and that whole thing is Newtons. And again, right, I want to check myself. I can square it, square it, square it, and take the take square root, add them together, take square root. What should I get? It better be 200, right? Because that's 200 times a unit vector, which is my magnitude of one, right? Okay, F2. F2, where is F2? F2, where are you? Right there. What is F2? Hmm. Now, you might be like distracted by this little triangle here, but that little triangle is just there to just tell you which quadrant that vector is like over. Because in 3D, it's hard to draw a vector and tell what quadrant it's in. Okay, so here we go. Um, 45, oh, from the Z to the vector, from the Y to the vector. I don't know where the X is. Okay, now you remember for F2, um, for F2, that guy is a directional cosine. Okay, but I did something mean to you here. I only gave you two, I didn't give you the third one, right? And th that could happen. So what equation do we need to remember? We need to remember this. Um, cosine squared theta x plus cosine squared theta y plus cosine squared theta z is equal to one, okay? And we remember our equations. Our equations go like this, fx equals f cos theta x, fy equals f cos theta y, and fz equals f cos theta z. Now, don't be confused by this. Remember, this is, this is in, in the book, this is alpha, this guy here is uh, beta, and this guy here is gamma, okay? Remember, I just like x, y, and z because it's just more descriptive. Okay, so what do we have? We have from the y to the vector, this is 60. So this guy here is 60, okay? We have from the, the z to the vector, that guy is 45. Okay, and here's the tricky part, okay? Here's where my students just lose their mind, okay? Theta x, all right, just looking at it, and theta x goes here. It goes from the x-axis to this vector, okay? Just looking at that, do you think theta x is going to be greater than 90 or less than 90? Dude, it's greater than 90, right? And if I take the cosine of a number, right, Positive numbers are going to give me less than 90 degree angles. Negative numbers are going to give me greater than 90 degree angles. So remember, when we take the square root of this, right, when you take the square root, you get a positive and a negative root. We want that negative root because that way, that cosine number is going to give us that angle bigger than 90, okay? Johnny Weeksauce is going to get this wrong, but not us, right? Be careful. This is where you mess it up, okay? So here we go. Let's try this out and see what we got. Okay, on, clear. Cosine of 60 um, equals, and then of course squared equals 0.25. So this is 0.25, okay? And then what's that guy? Um, that's 0.707, isn't it? That's the cosine of 45 is 707, and then square that. That is a 0.5, so plus 0.5. And then whatever this is, we'll just call him, um, I don't know, x, right, equals 1, okay? Let's see. And this, this thing, we'll, we'll just say x squared, okay? What is this going to be? So subtract that and that from over there. Uh, that's 0 0.75, and that off of 1 is 0 0.25, okay? And so the square root of 0.25... equals 0.5, okay? So 0.5. So this guy is either going to be inverse cosine of that, right? Inverse cosine of 0.5 is going to be 60, and the inverse cosine of negative 0.5, right? Um, inverse cosine negative 0.5 equals 120 degrees, okay? So the one that we're looking for here, theta, theta x, is 120 degrees, okay? So you see where that comes from? Be careful about the, when you take the square root of both sides, right? 
you you got to be careful about your um, your uh, your root there. Okay, so we know our theta x, theta y, and theta z, which go down here, right? So this is going to equal. Okay, what is f? How big is f? F is uh, 180. Okay, so 180 cos 120. And again, again, right? Look at this vector. What do we got? It's going to have a it's going to have a positive y. A positive z, but a negative x. So I better have negative, positive, positive, right? Let's see if we get that, okay? 180 cos, what was theta y? Theta y was 60 degrees. And then finally, 180 cos 45 degrees. Okay, here we go. Looking for negative, positive, positive. Come on, baby. Okay, 180 times the cosine of 120 is negative 90. Okay, that's cool. 180, cosine of 60, that's a half. So that's 90. And then the last one is point, you know, if you learn these little calculator tricks, it'll make you faster. 0 0.707 times 180 is 127.26. All right, there's vector F2. We got one to go, gang, and we got to do this last one. Is this guy? Look how this guy's given F3, which is 320. He's given with coordinates. They tell us where to go. Okay, I'll tell you where to go. Okay, F3. Okay, vector F3, which is we what we want here. I should put a little vector above those, shouldn't I? Five points off. Okay, vector F3 is F, the magnitude times lambda hat, okay, and of course the magnitude is given, it's 320, so 320 times lambda hat, so what is lambda hat? Well, again, we would do, we would, if it goes from, well, just make up some letters for yourself, right, O, and I'll call this point A, right, if it goes from O to A, it's A minus O, and O is all zero, so lambda hat is just going to be the coordinates of point A, well, that's easy enough, right? So how much in the x? Um, 2. How much in the y? 4. And the z? Negative 1.5. Okay. Divided by the magnitude, 2 squared plus 4 squared plus 1.5 squared. Okay, what is that? 2 squared plus 4 squared plus 1.5 squared. And then square root of that, square root, answer equals 4.72. Okay, and so here comes our lambda vector. Ready? Lambda vector, lambda hat, what we call, what do we call it, OA, right, is equal to, should be positive, positive, negative. And that makes sense too, doesn't it? Uh, positive X, positive Y, negative Z. Yes. Okay. Just kind of a sanity check every once in a while. Okay, so 2 divided by 4.72 is 0.424. Okay, and then 4 divided by 4.72, 0.847. And then the last one, 1 1.5 divided by 4.72. 0.318. Okay, so there you go. What's left? Just multiply 320 times lambda hat, and that gets us our last vector. So there's our vector, our lambda hat, which square it, square it, square it, take square root. Better get one, right? For the hundredth time, right? I know y'all get tired of me saying that, but maybe if I say it enough, you'll remember it. Times 320, 135.7. Okay, and the next one, 0.847 times 320, 271.271. Okay, and then one more, this one's gonna be negative. 0.318 times 320 is 101.8. And that is all Newtons. Okay, 
Dude, we're ready to add these up. Okay. All right, I'm going to erase some of our work here. Okay. Let's just erase all of that. We know what we got now. Wait, I didn't write that down. Just hit reverse. You'll be fine. Okay. How about FR? How easy is this, gang? Vector resultant guy here is simply 50 minus 90 plus 135.7, 95.7 in the I hat. And then you got 90 plus 271 minus 86.6 gives me 274.4 in the J hat. And the last one, 173.2 plus 127.26 minus 101.8 equals 198.66. Okay, so there is your resultant vector. Ooh, let's do this. 95.7 squared plus 274.4 squared plus 198.66 squared equals square root of the answer equals 352. So the resultant vector, the magnitude of that vector is 352, okay, newtons. All right, so they wanted the coordinate direction angles. Well, here we go, here's your coordinate direction angles. Here's alpha, or you can call it theta x, whatever, right, is equal to, here's how we find it, uh, cosine of theta x, okay, that's what we're looking for, is equal to fx over f, right, fx over f, and fx is there, right, 95.7, and F, the magnitude is there, 352. So, here we go. Theta X is equal to 95.7 divided by 352, and then inverse cosine of that is equal to 74.22. Okay, there's one, beta, or theta y, whatever you want to call it, is cosine theta y, f y over f equals, here's f y, 274.4 divided by 352, that makes theta y equal to 274.4 divided by 352 equals inverse cosine, inverse answer equals 38.78 degrees. One more. Gamma, or theta z, whatever you want to call it, equals cosine theta z, which is fz, that's a z, over f, which is fz is here. 198.66 over 352, which makes theta z equal to 198, whoop, clear, 198.66 divided by 352 equals uh, inverse cosine of that equals 55.64. Okay, and that is how you do that, okay? There's your resultant vector, right? Be sure and put units on this. Don't forget your units. There's the magnitude of that vector, and there are the coordinate direction angles. Dude, we're gonna make 100 on this test. Good luck, y'all.